Hello everyone, Karen Glasser here, and I'd like to welcome you to this very special episode of The Passion Point. And I'm really excited because I have a really good colleague and friend on with uh, me today. Uh, her name is Susan Berland, and she is um, a parenting coach, but she's very specific in, in, in what she coaches on in the LGBTQ, and we're going to talk about that, what does that exactly mean, um, and, and helping parents adjust and transition and help their children during this um, as, they, as they discover who they are. Uh, as we get towards the end of the episode, I'm going to make sure that you know how to reach out to Susan uh, if you have children that possibly might be in this world and you want to have a better way of supporting them. Susan is your go-to woman and I'm just delighted that you're on with us today. So let's just start, Susan, right off the bat. What does LGBTQ stand for? What are all those letters? And it seems to get longer and longer and longer. It used to be just, you know, what LG yes, it is. does. It does. It gets longer and longer. So what do all of those letters mean? Well, the L stands for lesbian. The G stands for gay. B is for bisexual. T for transgender. And Q is used in a number of different ways. It could be questioning. It could be queer. It could be gender queer, even though that's really a G. Um, a lot of people that are gender queer identify as queer. And then there's lots of other letters. There's uh, a for asexual, I for intersex. Wow. Um, yeah. So, and it just, yeah, people call it alphabet soup. <laughs> it's a, I was going to say, it sounds like the whole alphabet rolled into one. So, what's right. the difference between sexual orientation and gender identity? I know there's a difference. So, what's the difference between the two? Well, I've heard it said, I wish I made this up myself because I love it so much, but I didn't. Um, gender identity is who I go to sleep as and sexual orientation is who I go to sleep with. And so oh. identity is about, do you identify male or female, neither, both, somewhere in between. Whereas sexual orientation has nothing to do, you can have a gender identity that's male and your assigned sex at birth was female and you can be uh, gay. So they're two, they're really two different things. I sometimes wonder why the T was added in, but um, so, the sexual orientation is who you're physically attracted to, who you're romantically attracted to in terms of their gender. So uh, if, if it's confusing to you and me in terms of all these letters, and maybe not confusing is not the right word, I can only imagine as a parent or as just in our society when we hear all these letters and it's like, oh my gosh, really? There's just so many of them. And I think, I mean, I immediately go to those who have been so publicly out there. Um, what do they actually um, identify are they are, are they identifying or is it or like you know we think of Caitlin formerly known as Bruce you know is this is this a, uh, a transgender thing is this a what is it exactly and who does he represent? Well, if, if, you, you, if you use Caitlin Jenner as an example Caitlin Jenner identifies as transgender she identifies and has always felt like a woman even though she was born male she has not declared what her sexual orientation is. Yes. It would seem since she's always been attracted to women that she would now identify as a lesbian, but she has not chosen to do so. It's not up to me to determine that for her. So is that confusing? Are, is that confusing for our society? Because, you know, and I, I've actually seen some interviews and I've seen some people asking questions like, well, okay, so now you're a woman, but you were in female relationships all your life with other women, why aren't you identifying as a lesbian or why aren't you doing, does that get confusing for all of us out here or is it just, just part of the growth? I think it's confusing for all of us out here, but it, from her perspective, she's just transitioned. I think it's less than a year. Right. So, you know, she probably just needs some time to figure it out. Right. When you transition when you're 13 or 14 or when you transition when you're seven or eight, you know, those things come a lot more quickly. I mean, she's had, like you said, she's been in three marriages to women. So, right. Who knows? Right. And then do her kids call her mom or dad? And then that becomes that as well. I mean, I, some of her. Well, one of them calls her mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> and I guess it doesn't. I don't know if, if you've watched the, uh, the TV show Transparent, you know, it's about 
a, right. a man who transitions to being female later in life, like uh, Caitlyn Jenner did, and her kids call her Mapa. Mapa. Okay. Well. Okay. Ma-pa. So we're we're actually creating. There's we're creating new words for the dictionary, and that's what it really kind of feels like. As 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 uh, you know, we're in the situation of. I respect all, I mean, I do, I respect all people, all sexuality, anything, but it, we're actually making up words now because it's such new territory. It's such new territory. So what I'd like to do is actually delve into each one of the letters, so to speak, and, and start with gay or lesbian. So um, what age would you say, or is there an age that, that people come out, the kids come, usually come out to say, I'm gay, I'm lesbian? Well, in the in the old days when you and I were growing up, um, people didn't come out until I mean they didn't come out publicly until right. way later in life. Today, there's so much in the media, there's so much acceptance, there's so many more people that are out that I think there's more of a freedom. And I've heard of kids coming out as gay or lesbian as young as seven. And how do they know? How do they know? They just know the same way you know. The same way you know you're, you're straight. At seven? At seven? Well, I, do, I don't remember thinking about it at seven, but this child obviously did. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, and when you talk to anyone who's come out, they will tell you they've always known. Right. I mean, my son didn't come out until he was 20. And I don't, and I don't think he really came out to himself until like a month before. But if I ask him today, he'll tell me, I always knew. Maybe he didn't have words for it back then. It right. was a different time. Right. But right. he always knew. So I think this, this, if there is a standard, there's not really a standard, and I have no empirical data to say what the average is, but my sense of it from all of the moms and, and that I know is that kids are, tend to come out in their teens. Sometimes, you know, it could be preteens of 12 or 13, and sometimes it's not till their 20s. And I think a lot of that has to do with the family relationship and how safe they feel. Right. And that was going to be my next question. I mean, you you work with parents and and kids that have come out. So what generally, or or is there a generalization of what parent, how parents react? And is that, does that kind of, as you just mentioned, it might um, actually affect how soon somebody might come out versus how late they might come out. So what are some of the common reactions a, a parent might have when their kids come out to them? Well, some of the most common is, um, well, I think for moms in particular, I don't think, I don't know if dads have this, but a lot of moms have, I'm not going to be a grandmother. And it's a really common reaction. Right. Um, so there's, you know, we don't think of all the numbers of people we know who are gay, who have children. We just think right. I'm not going to be a grandmother. Right. You know, so that's, that's an emotional response, not a rational response. Um, there's fear that comes up for parents pretty commonly. A fear for their child's safety, fear for their happiness. You know, will they be discriminated against? Will they find, you know, love? Um, is someone going to try and beat them up because of who they are? Right. Will there be bullying in school and how am I going to deal with that? So there's a lot of fear. And then grief comes up as well. There's, you know, whether we do it consciously or unconsciously, I think most parents have some vision for what their child's life is going to be like. Right. And then most of us are not envisioning a, a gay child. You know, I, don't, I didn't, even right. though I had all the signs. So it's all of a sudden it's, well, he's not who, it's not that he's not who I thought he was, but his life isn't going to look the way I thought it might. Right. right. So there's, that kind of stuff comes up pretty commonly too. So how can a parent keep their uh, gay or lesbian child safe in an environment like this? I mean, you talked about bullying and you talked about, you know, how, what's it going to be like for them out there? Is there any, any things that parents can do to um, keep them safe, to let them know that they're loved and um, that they're always, I mean, I'm, I'm, I suppose I'm giving you some, some of my own thoughts on this, letting them know that they're there, that the family is there for them no matter what happens in the outside world, how do you keep your kids safe? I mean, bullying is such a huge, huge problem in our, in our world right now and has been for a long time. I, yeah, I think the first thing parents have to do is not be the bully. And, I, you know, it, the most well-intentioned parent who loves their child will often say things in the emotion of having found out that are not 
particularly positive or enforcing to a child, no matter how old a child is. Right. And I think that can be more true for um, parents who were raised in a very strict religious background and have believed their whole life that being gay is a sin, it's a choice. You know, their child's not going to be with them in heaven. A lot of that stuff comes up. And so when you tell your kids that, I'm afraid for you, that we won't be together in heaven, you're, I, I see the parent is doing that from love, they're, and, but really they're doing it from their own fear. So for, to parents, I say, you know, don't say any of those things. Just tell your child, I love you. I need some time to figure this out. I need some time to adjust. This is new information. Process, process the whole thing. You know, right. Just give me some time to, to figure it out. And, you know, and then it's up to the parents to figure right. it out. Right. And there's a lot of ways they can do that. And in terms of outside bullying, those of us whose children were already adults and out of the house, when they came out, we worry, but there's not a lot we can do. Right. They're adults. They have to take care of themselves. When there are dependents and they're in school and there's, you know, bullying is going on in school, we have to let the kids know that it's okay to come to us. We have to watch for a change in behavior that might happen as a result of bullying. And we have to be their advocates. Right. And there's a lot of great resources for educating schools, administrators, teachers, and that type of thing. Um, we may have to be the ones to provide that information to, to the schools if they're willing. Right, exactly. So somebody who identifies as gay uh, generally is a male who is attracted to other males sexually, right? And yes. one who's lesbian is, is, a, is a female who's attracted to another female in a romantic sexual way. So let's move into bisexual. So we've got a, now a, a child that comes out as, I'm bisexual. First of all, what does bisexual mean? Um, there's a lot of things it means and things that it doesn't mean, but, but generally a person who's bisexual is attracted to another person regardless of their gender. So they're attracted to the person, not whether they're male or female. So they can have romantic sexual relationship with either a male or a female. So that's the big difference then between uh, going, be saying that I'm gay or lesbian versus I'm bisexual. Gay is, is very specifically man to man, lesbian is, is woman to woman, and bisexual is it doesn't matter, it's, it's I'm attracted to the right. person. Right, exactly. And, you know, there are some misconceptions. People think that people that are bisexual have to have a partner of each gender. Not true. That may be true for some, but it's not a global truth. Okay. Um, people think that, but that it's just a phase until they figure out which one they're really attracted to. Also not true. It may be for some, for some kids, they'll come out as bisexual because they think it's easier for their parent to handle until they're ready to tell them, no, I'm not really bisexual. I'm really gay or lesbian. Ah, um, okay. But for the most part, for someone who really is bisexual and identifies as bisexual, it's not a phase and it isn't something they're going to choose. And, and a parent will think sometimes, well, if you're bisexual, it's just easier if you limit yourself to the opposite sex because it's more acceptable in society, your life will be easier, et cetera, et cetera. But that, whenever I hear that, it reminds me of my father telling me when I was a teenager, it's just as easy to fall in love with someone rich as someone poor. Right. Well, that's not true. It's not true. It's, it's not true. <laughs> no, you fall in love with who you fall in love with. So, so, so they can't just choose, you know, if they're bisexual, it's not a matter of saying, oh, well, I'm just going to make it easy for myself and just choose. I, and I, you know, it's funny because we watch the this entertainment news these days. We watch, you know, the celebrities and I have, I have noticed, uh, and I don't know if it's just because I'm more aware of it these days. A lot of women in particular have come out and, and saying I'm bisexual and they, they, they go back and forth. They have female relationships and then they have male relationships and they go back to female and, and does that mean that they're confused or is just who, again, it goes back to the definition of bisexual. They're just attracted to people, no matter what their gender is. Well, you, there, are plenty, there, are, there are plenty of people who are bisexual who are in long-term committed relationships right. with one gender or the other. So um, uh, Lady Gaga identifies as bisexual and she's engaged to a man. She's right. been with him for a long time. You know, so that's who she 
she landed with. And there's another actress, and I can't think of her name right now. And I think it's Anna Paquin, who also identifies as bisexual, but she's been married for to her husband for a long time. And I remember an interview I saw with her where Larry King asked her about, you know, well, she wasn't bisexual anymore because she's now with a man. But she was very clear that that's not true. Right. You know, that that is who she is. And that, you know, she's also a person who believes in monogamy. And she's married. And, and she's well, that happy. Was, that was actually going to be my next question. And I know I'm reading from a list of questions that we had talked about before. But that actually was going to be a question I was going to ask. Does... Do, I have also listened to interviews where, not that particular one, where, where they, people make the assumption that it's an excuse to live in a different kind of lifestyle, an alternative lifestyle. Because, you know, I, I, I like women, I like men. Yes, I'm married. You said that Anna Paquin is, is a monogamous. And is that the, the norm? Or is that... I don't know what the norm is. I, I you know... Um, yeah. You know, I don't know if there is a norm. I do know a woman um, who is a therapist who identifies as bisexual. She's been married for many, many, many years. She also has a long-term relationship with a woman. I don't know. I don't know that that's the norm or what Anna Paquin's doing is the norm. Right. What she told me was that in order to have that kind of relationship with one's husband, there has to be a lot of honesty and openness. And she said, generally, that's not the case. So it, it's really difficult right. to do that. And that makes sense. But it does happen. It does happen, but that does make sense. And I, I, I've, I've heard that question asked on multiple interviews of, well, what does that mean? It's just, it's just an excuse to go out and have multiple partners, and it doesn't really matter. Um, Okay, so what if someone is bisexual and they identify that they are bisexual, what does this mean for them in their life? Does it mean, um, I mean, we've touched upon it already, but what is it, does it mean in the overall picture? Does, are they looking specifically for, for someone who's also bisexual? Or are they looking for, I mean, do you have bisexuals that are having relationship with other bisexuals? Is that? No, I don't think so. I think it's just like I said, they're looking for the person they just fall in love with the person right um there's a lot of you know people that are bisexual in the lgbt community feel that their their letter of the alphabet soup kind of gets ignored that for a woman for example who identifies as bisexual you know lesbians will say well come, just you, you know you're a lesbian just pick you know or which just sounds like what parents might say except right, they would say right. the opposite but um you know, they are who they are. They're just born the same, that way, the same way that someone who's gay is born that way. Right. You know, right. It, it, they don't want, they can't just pick. Right. You know, they fall in love with a person. It, the person may be male, the person may be female. Okay, so we're going to now move into the, the letter T, transgender. And this is the one that I think is, is relatively new to the table in terms of, and it has so much more exposure now because of people in this, in the, uh, the news that, are, that have come out. What or how is being transgender being different than gay? Well, like I said earlier, one has nothing to do with the other. One, one can be gay and transgender. Transgender is um, when you were born one gender, and I'll say male, for example, but you feel like you're female from as far back as you can remember. So for a little boy, he might say something like, why do I have a penis? I'm a girl. Right. Um, or vice versa, a girl, you know, particularly going through puberty would be very upset with developing breasts and, right. and the rounding and the softening of your face and the kind of things that happen because she knows that she's, you know, her body parts may look like a girl, but she knows she's a boy. So how do parents, that's so, so what does a parent do? How does a parent react to that? Well, they can react in a lot of ways. I mean, I think, I, think, I think Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt and their daughter who identifies as... Shiloh. Shiloh identifies as... And, you know, they, they have dealt with it in a very particular way. Whatever Shiloh wants to be, Shiloh is. And, and if Shiloh wants to dress as a boy, and that's obviously, I would think, very health... I, personally, I think it's a very healthy way to look at it. Not all parents can do that, Right. Not all parents can do that, and, and there, you know, there are parents who will 
really force their child into uh, gender stereotypes because they think that, you know, like if, if you let your little boy play with dolls, that's only going to cause him to be gay or cause him to be transgender. But you, you either are or you aren't. And, but it's biology. Um, this is biology. This is not it is like, biology. This is all biology. And for those of you who are listening to this, I don't think we actually specific. This is biology. This is not. I, I woke up one day and just made, decided. Oh, I think I'm going to do this for a. Ch this is biology. This is nature versus nurture and the whole thing. You are born into this. This is not something. In fact, I've heard a lot of people in the community saying. I, I wouldn't go out of my way to choose to, to be like this if I, it wasn't who it is, who I am. This right. is how I was right. born, right? Right. So, and yes, absolutely. And studies, um, I heard about a study, I don't, you know, I, I didn't read it personally, but I, I did hear about a study that showed that um, in utero, a baby's genitalia develops at about, starts to develop at about six weeks. And, but their identity, their sexual or identity or their gender identity doesn't develop until many, many months later. So when I heard that, I was like, well, that makes sense that you could develop male genitals, but develop a female identity. And I don't know if it has to do with hormones in the womb. I don't know what it has to do with. Right, okay, chromosomes um, and hormones and all that stuff. I did, I did hear a, a speaker who's... Um, I think he's a biologist and he shared studies of brains of transgender people and transgender males. That means someone who was born female and, and transitioned to become male. Their brain is the same as someone who is a cisgender male and vice versa. So someone who is a transgender woman, her brain is the same as a cisgender woman. And what was interesting, because my first thought when I heard this was, well, maybe the hormones make it a difference. But the people they studied in, in this study, some had done hormones and some had not. So they may have lived as the gender they identified with, but they never did anything medical. And yet they still had that brain difference. And wow. that to me told, says That's, a lot. It speaks volumes. It absolutely yes. speaks volumes. So how is it different for a parent of a transgender young person or older person versus a parent of a gay or lesbian well, I think there's a, all this, you know, a lot of the same fears come up, um, but then there's so much more when you have a child who's transgender. Um, there's the whole um, transition. So you have to educate people. It could be the teachers and the principal at school, and then it's the children. It depends on the age of your child. There's the whole issue of bathrooms. I mean, we keep hearing about bathrooms because there are states across this country that are trying to pass anti-LGBT laws so that boys don't go into girls' bathrooms. That's what they're saying. But it, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's so um, narrow-minded in so many ways. But that is one of the things parents have to deal with. And then, you know, the fears, in addition to the, all the same fears that we of gay or lesbian children have, they have plus what's the effect of long-term hormones this child's going to want to have surgery you know that's and that means anesthesia and right you know there's a lot of what ifs and you know so there's parents of transgender kids have i think a lot more concerns and worries than parents of lgb kids well and there's also new names right and pronouns and you know is it he or she or they, them, or Z, or, yeah, there's all kinds of new pronouns. And it also means ch a lot of legal stuff, because if you want to have your gender changed, some, st excuse me, some states are, uh, allow you to change your birth certificate, and some right now aren't. Wow. But you can change your driver's license and your passport. I mean, if you think about, I don't know, it was so long ago, I don't remember, but my son just went through it because he changed his name when he and his husband got married. If you think about all the things you have to do to change right. those, you know, and, and, he had a marriage and, certificate. Right, and, but, and you're not just talking about names now, you're also talking about your, your, your sex, whether you're female or male. Right, that is what I'm, that, yeah. yeah. Right, exactly. So I think Brad and Angelina were lucky. They gave Shiloh a very neutral name. <laughs> Right. Okay. That's what I, I was trying to remember as I was asking you that. Okay. Was it a, a boy that wanted to be a girl or a girl that wanted to be a boy? Because I couldn't remember whether the name Shiloh went, but they didn't know that going in. 
No, they didn't know that going in. It was just, and I don't know that Shiloh will choose to keep that name. It depends. But it is a name that can go either way in right, terms of right. gender. Oh. So um, let's, I, I, I have to assume that the, the fear and, uh, and the uh, reaction from the community also is hard for the transgender individual in terms of suicide and, and other things in terms of the reaction as to how their family, their friends, the community has actually reacted to them. Can we talk a little bit about that suicide and um, how difficult this is? Well, I read a recent article that said, you know, we have, we know how to reduce suicide in transgender kids. And the biggest impact is acceptance by their parents. Well, for a lot of us, that was like a duh. Yeah. 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 But that makes such a huge difference. And I know kids whose parents were totally accepting who still committed suicide because of the relentless bullying from their peers and you know today with social media bullying is not just in person it's 24 hours a day it can be texts it can be facebook posts it can be whatever i'm not sure what all the kids are on these days but yeah. you know but they, yeah, so it's, it's social media and it doesn't take much to put just one thing out there and it goes viral and yeah and viral basically means within their own little right. community but yeah, and it, it can be really, really hard. So I mean, some parents take their kids out of school, they homeschool them, or they find a school that's completely accepting. But you know, people that live in the Midwest, some parts of the Midwest and the South, they don't have any other options. Yeah, it's tragic. This is tragic. It, it's tragic. It is tragic. It's it is tragic. So and, uh, you know, transgender people are underemployed. Um, many of them have turned to bec become sex workers just so they can pay their bills. There's and then there's a tremendous, you know, um, fear of violence. And, you know, right. we read about the number of, of transgender women in particular that have been murdered. Well, so, and so, but some, uh, and I'm going to admit, I watch a soap opera. So one of the soap operas out there, Bold and the Beautiful, actually has as one of their main characters, um, a transgender well, woman who used to be a man, and she is the head model of this agency. And they've gone through the whole, they've done a beautiful job representing all the different aspects of, of coming out, what the fam the father, how the father reacts and how terrible it is, how the mother reacts. They, they actually have, have brought in, she, now she's not really transgender, the woman who's playing this, but they have brought in other actors and actresses who are transgender to play other parts, um, to bring the reality and, and make it, it is real, and it's actual real life. So it's nice to see that our, our media is starting to, um, uh, transparent, you talked about, um, that our media and our entertainment industry is starting to um, address this in a positive, healthy way, I think, which is, which is great. This particular show I'm talking about, she's actually going to have a baby through her sister kind of thing so that she can have, they can have a family. Because the first thing that I heard you said earlier was, I'm not going to be a grandparent. And there are ways, obviously. To, to there are ways. And, you know, trans, transgender males will sometimes have their eggs frozen and transgender females will have their sperm frozen. Right. And they'll, they'll think about doing that before horm hormones or they'll think about doing them after hormones. I mean, right. I'm not sure what all the medical implications right. are, but I also know that there are transgender men who have birthed babies. So really? Yeah. Huh? Okay. Well, Hey, I, I think it's I think it's great, and it may, I hope we're moving in the in the right what I would consider the right direction on, on that. Let's go to yeah. the Q letter. Let's go to Q. So, um, my child is queer or gender queer. So, what's the difference? Um, it depends on how the child chooses to identify. Basically, some so just like um, there's a, a spectrum in in sexual orientation. You're either straight, you know, straight. It's at this end homosexuals at this end and bisexual tends to be in the right. middle. I kind of think of queer and gender queer that way. So someone who's queer or gender queer may identify as both male and female. They may identify as neither male or female, or they may flow in the middle somewhere where some days they are feeling more female and they dress more female and other days they feel more male and they present more male. So I'm fascinated by, but I'm fascinated by the word queer. In my day growing up, that was a slur. You did not call people queer. I mean, that was just not a word that we used. So how has that kind of evolved into 
Is it that if you're if you use it yourself, it's okay, but other people can't? I mean, I don't. I, that to me is actually just um, a curiosity. How that word has actually come back? Well, people in the gay community, and I, I don't. I guess I haven't spoken to too many men, but some of the women I've spoken with are find it. Well, actually, that's not true. I find it really offensive, and that's because it was used against them. I think you know. The, but the younger people want to reclaim the word as their own. And they don't identify as male or female. They don't identify as gay or straight. Queer is what fits for them. And so they're claiming the word. And if someone tells me they're queer, then I will refer to them as queer. I'm, I will not determine you are queer or you're not queer. That's up to you, whoever you are. But um, it's really hard for some of the people who've been around as long as you and I have where it was a slur. Yeah. Uh, so... And they're not happy about it being used. But, you know, it's like, well, you don't have to use it. This is up to that person. They want to use it. There was a show on, on Bravo several years ago called Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. And it was yep, the first time, it. remember that? And it was the first mm -hmm. time um, it, before at knowing that, you know, you never use the word queer. Here it was on mainstream media. There were these five queer guys and they identified as being queer, which I think also identified as they were gay. Um, and, but they said they were queer, not, not gay, queer eye. And I think that was like the first time, at least in my recent past, I don't know if you've know, knew of any other, were they, it was like, it was just out there and it was very popular. It was a very popular show because it took what it took this, the stereotype that straight men don't know how to, dress and how to take care of themselves and how to have a nice apartment or whatever, but only queer guys did. What's that about? Well, those queer guys did. I don't think all queer guys necessarily do. But it, And you also point out that sometimes someone who's gay uses the word queer and it doesn't have anything to do with their gender identity. That happens too. Right. Uh, I mean, the Huffington Post for many years has had a section they call the Huffington Post Gay Voices. And it's all their stories about LGBT rights and what's going on in the world. Well, just a month ago, they changed it to, to Huffington Post Queer Voices. So people weren't happy with that either. <laughs> but it's becoming more mainstream. What can I tell you? It just is. So you touched on it in the, in the segment. We were talking a little bit earlier about the pronouns. And so why, why do we use them and they rather than he or she? Is that to identify their both? Well, the person who chooses they and them often identifies as both or, or may identify as neither male or female. So using he or using she doesn't fit for them. Right. Some people who identify as queer or genderqueer do use either male or female pronouns. And some of them have made up their own or they're, I don't know where they were made up, but they, you know, like, Z, uh, I think it's Z-E and Z-E-R and... <laughs> Or um, it's you know, MAPA, as you said earlier, MAPA. We just make up a word and we refer to your both or, or whatever. Yeah. It's a communication yeah. thing, I yeah. think. Yeah. That one is really, can be really hard for parents to adjust to. It's certainly hard for people outside the family. I mean, I hear this all the time. Even my husband says this to me. Well, it's plural. It's not a singular pronoun. You can't use that. It's not Because I do it, I use it in my right. writing a lot. Right. It's like, well... <laughs> No, uh, this is how people prefer to be, right. you know, referred to then. And that's, some, you know, just that's a courtesy that we're learning. Those of us that are straight allies and cisgender allies are learning to ask people, what pronouns do you prefer? Right, right. So let's take this now into real life for our viewers and the people that are watching this and or maybe reading the notes. How, how, what would you, what's your advice Right now, I mean, other than, and I'm going to suggest, if you find yourself in this situation and, and your children are coming out or, or you to call Susan or to get in touch with Susan, but what, what is the first thing? I mean, what do you suggest to, to parents that are finding themselves here? I, I mean, you've talked earlier about, you know, telling your kids, let me, let me process this, let me digest this, let me, but then you got your friends you got to tell or not. Uh, your community, your family, you know, how do you navigate this? This is, this is, um, it's, it's not what we all thought we were going to grow up. It's going to be simple. You have a boy, you have a girl, and that's the way it is. We live in a different world. How do you navigate this? What do you tell parents? Well, I tell parents to get support. 
um, and to get support from places you know are safe. I mean, particularly parents of coming from this conservative religious background, right. that can be a big challenge because right. not only, you know, not only has their child come out, but they face the fear of losing their entire community because their church community for many of them and their families who believe the way they've always believed, right. there's a huge fear about losing that. So it's really important to get support. Um, so find someone you can talk to, call me, I'll be happy to talk to people. Um, there's some private Facebook groups. You can't find them by searching, but I know them. So, if, you know, if that's a, a okay. resource. There's PFLAG. Um, if you're dealing with uh, a gender issue with your child, it's really important to get sound medical advice and from someone who is knowledgeable in the area. So, you know, that, that kind of thing can be very important. There's psychologists, there's doctors, endocrinologists, uh, plastic surgeons, all kinds of people that really right. know what they're doing in this area. Well, Susan, I want to thank you for your openness and your honesty in talking about this. I think it is such an important conversation, and this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of the of the conversations, and I think the more conversations we have and the more open we are about this, it's going to make it easier for our young people and our not-so-young people that are coming out at all different ages um, and I, I want to encourage our viewers to, uh, when you read the, the notes down there, you're going to see SusanBerlin.com. That's correct. Susan right? Hope Berlin. Susan Hope no, Berlin com, And it will be down there. I apologize. Uh, click on it and get in touch with Susan and ask your questions. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe this is a great uh, opportunity for growth for you and your family. And um, I just, I so appreciate you, Susan, and, and being, uh, to be here and to share your knowledge. Thank you. I appreciate you and giving me this opportunity to do that. Thank you, Karen. Oh, you're so welcome. And again, our viewers, we want to appreciate you for being on today. We know that you have a choice as to how you spend your time. And we want to thank you for spending time with us today, with Susan and myself. So, um, you know, this, is, this can be a scary, a scary process, a scary thing, and it can be a joyful thing because when you, you get to know your children even more, I see that as a very positive positive experience once you get past all the rest of the garbage it can be a very positive experience Absolutely. so susan thank you and i look forward to having you on in the very near future and uh go out and go out and have a, an awesome day everyone and we'll see you soon bye-bye